Serge here. You're going to want to sit down. So market research shows that I'm the nice one, and I've been asked to deliver the news as you'll take it better coming from me. Corporate just returned from their annual meeting in the Swiss Alps, including a private performance by Sting, and they say we're hemorrhaging money. To return to profitability, here are a list of services we previously offered for free that we're now going to start charging for inexplicably. Ads. Our investors were shocked to find out that we were letting you enjoy ads for free. Ignore the fact that A, they interrupt content, and B, they're already a source of revenue. From now on, we're going to be charging you the privilege of watching ads. Camera angles. Corporate has told us our multi-camera setup is no longer affordable, despite having already paid off all of the cameras. So, we've created a new tiered camera subscription model. At the free tier, you can watch the wide angle shot. And at higher premium tiers, you can access the increased more Dutch angles and even our beloved overhead shot. Really dive in and customize your viewing experience. Live chat. Chat is a powerful tool that is essential for us to communicate with you, our audience. But do you have any idea how expensive chat is? We've decided to put in a low fee of 10 cents per character or 25 cents per emote. We feel this is a fair price and will also discourage malicious users who took advantage of our services previously. But don't worry, we'll continue to allow trolls to post their banned messages for the competitive fee of $10. To avoid losing access to our features, please ensure you have updated your payment information because it's live and something's going to happen. From near and far, young and old, people of every shape, ability, and gender, welcome to Loading Ready Live. Today on the show... We extract maximum value for our money with another Showcase Showdown. We try to figure out what that buzzing sound is in Hear and Seek. We redefine what it means to be a thirst trap in Drank Roulette. Hey... I hit cancel and wiped out the script. I, but I wrote it all out again. So, wait, does that mean I have to say it all again? Well, all this and more on Loading Ready Live, starting right now. Oh, and welcome to a very special episode of Loading Ready Live. It's special because we only do them once a month here on the Loading Ready Run Mega Entertainment. But this is going to be a fantastic evening's worth of light entertainment for everybody involved. Except Serge and Matt, because our first segment is... Showcase Showdown! Woo, 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 woo. Oh, this must be your first time. <laughs> Paul, cue the music! All right, if you, audience at home, are not familiar with how Showcase Showdown works, this is basically the beloved game show that we do. However... We, uh, this is modeled loosely on it. My version is, uh, offers up two what I like to call unique prize packs for you guys to, uh, <laughs> determine the dubious value of. And just like the real show, whoever is closer without going over wins. All right, so we flipped a coin before the beginning of the show, and Matt lost, so he has to go first. <laughs> Congratulations. Right. Are you ready for your first <laughs> showcase, Matt? You worked so hard on it, of course I am. Oh, good. So as a reminder, you can bid on this at the end if this is a vacation you must have, or you can pass and see what future delights are in store, just like on Showcase show Showdown. So as long as you're ready, Matt, let's all pack our bags and say our prayers because we're jetting off to beautiful Spain. Ooh. That's right. Our first showcase takes us to Spain, which is, as we know, is the land of paella, flamenco, and being tired of British tourists. Mm. But luckily for you, few other tourists are going to be joining you at the Museo del Orinal. Orinal. So, in case you're wondering what that is, that is, of course, 
the museum of the urinal. But not really urinal, because translated li literally, it means the museum of the chamber pots. Mm -hmm. Because you are going to the museum of the chamber pots. Founded in 2006, this museum in Curidad Rodrigo. It features a collection of over 1,300 historic chamber pots. However, that's not the only bodily fluid on display here because they also have a collection of spittoons. That's right. Housed in an 18th century building that was previously a seminary, the Museum of the, Museum of the Urinal was the brainchild of a collector by the name of Jose Maria del Arco. He accumulated over 3,000 of these things before he died in 2011. <coughs> but the museum lives on as a tribute to his dual passions of collecting chamber pots and, swear to God, promoting tourism in his hometown. <laughs> I can, I can see it in his eyes. Is yes. he emptying an active spittoon right there? Like, well, what is what is happening? That is that is that is a rare children's combination high chair chamber pot, apparently, which they have uh, some from uh, in here. Uh, as you can see, here's a little like shrine to uh, Jose Maria del Arco. He was a real stumper for the town, and uh, anyhow, there I found out so much information about him. I found his obituary, and we don't need to go into that, but he's a fascinating man. Hmm. Uh, there's those combination high chair uh, chamber pots. I'd like the one with the cushion. Yeah. Yeah. A modesty cushion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that you don't have to see that it's filled with poop. Um, but that's that's not all. Some of these chamber pots don't uh, date back from like the 13th century, so it's very exciting. Some of those shapes are fascinating. Mm -hmm. There's, <laughs> you know what? Put that together. <laughs> Yeah, the, the shape of the... I learned a lot about chamber pots. The shape of the chamber pot has changed a lot over the years. Um, also, of note, there's no gift shop at this museum. <laughs> so you have to buy one of the chamber pots? Absolutely not. They're collector's items. <laughs> fair, fair. But of course, since we're in Claudio Rodrigo, which is, of course, the lovely Spanish province of Salamanca, what visit simply wouldn't be complete without an I. Iberian Pig Tour! Pigs! That's right! Hosted at the Phineas Camparas Ranch, this walking tour will take you through gentle wooden pastures as you learn about the rearing of Spain's famous Iberian pigs wow. and their acorn-based diet. Ooh. After the walk, you'll be able to sample a selection of Iberian pig-based meats, such as pork loin, ham, chorizo, and salami, which are, of course, all come from these adorable animals after they're cut up. Uh, and uh, that is in the dining room of the five-star rated Faneras Camparas Country Hotel, which you are not staying at. <laughs> because you're too busy. You're too busy in Spain. After you've seen your Iberian pigs, you're going to be whisked away to the, Fanish, the fabulous Spanish industrial town of O'Neill, where you'll be embarking upon the Root of the Dog! That's right. If you like dolls, this is the tour for you. Because this specialty guided tour consists of two parts. First, a tour of the Bergeron Doll Factory, which has been making dolls for over 40 years. And after a various whirlwind tour of crates and machinery, you'll then embark on a special guided tour of the O'Neill Doll Museum which features more than 1,000 dolls and tells the amazing story of how O'Neill's formerly small and family-based toy-making business became industrialized in the 20th century. <laughs> I'll make sure to invite Ben on this part of the trip. Uh, well, uh, this is showcases only for one person. Uh, <laughs> but as you can see, there's a variety of doll parts on display. There's the machine that stitches the hair onto the dolls. Mm. Um, and uh, as a warning of the guided tours, uh, all the uh, tours of the doll museum are given by volunteers and they dress up as dolls while they do so. So everyone wears that outfit <laughs> or their own version thereof. <clears throat> huh. All right, now, Matt. If this is your showcase, I bet you're thinking, Ugh, all these factories, they sure are fun. But could what uh, what trip to Spain wouldn't be complete without one of the country's most breathtaking sights? And you would be absolutely correct because you are going to visit the world's second largest chair. Where's the first? Just curious, where's the first? I, I have information upon okay. where that is okay. for you. <laughs> The chair is, of course, located outside the Huerta's Chair Factory in beautiful Lucina, Spain. The chair was built in 2005 and is, ex and is an exact replica of, the, of a real chair made at the Huerta's Factory, although this version stands 26 meters, that's eight stories tall. 
And uh, while this chair lost the title of world's largest chair in 2009 to an Austrian chair that stands over 30 meters tall, oh, okay. this one is special because according to the city of Lucina's official tourism website, which is what we're looking at here, the chair houses a meeting room and can be access accessed by both stairs and elevator. Oh, that's... You can go inside the chair! That's a... Section. Is part of the showcase that you booked that room? Or are we just, like, walking by the chair? You're just aware that it's a room? <laughs> I mean... You get to look at the chair. Okay. Maybe you get to go inside. I didn't phone the chair factory to see if I could book their meeting room, but it does host Chamber of Commerce meetings. Okay. That's, like, legitimately kind of cool, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, this is something I would go yeah, to. Yeah, 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 yeah. No yeah. matter what. All right. But now, who has ever showcased this is, says, hold up! Because I know my Spanish geography, and how am I getting from Salamanca all the way to Alicante and then on to Cordoba? Well, those are three separate provinces in Spain, and of course, you are exactly right, which is why you're getting around in your brand new, to you, 1995 Lencia Capa! <laughs> I can't drive, but that'll be that'll be an adventure in itself. Yes. Did side paneling fall off? Well, you see, this is a this car boasts a 2.4 liter engine, over 184,000 kilometers driven, and uh, and a unique paint job. Yes. Mm -hmm. We'll say mm -hmm. uh, the Lancia Kappa is an Italian-made family car that was famed for its uh, restrained visual design, and a body that was uh, that was uh, made for torches. Uh, torsi torsigenal rigidity that was 15% stiffer than other similar models of the time. Oh, nice. According to its Wikipedia page. This Kappa itself, of course, comes with uh, a, a air conditioning, electric mirrors, power steering, sporty manual transition, and what I'm uh, going to describe as a well-loved blue velour interior. <laughs> You can see right on the like that flip down console where like all the blue worn down. It's been rubbed to a shiny nub wow. with like heat, there, skin oil and stuff. There's so much human on that car. The amazing part is they didn't clean the interior before the photos. I mean, I Look think they did it. clean the interior before the photos. Surge. Yeah, it's a recovery. <laughs> all right, well, you better hope that Lancia Kappa is fast because you certainly do not want to be late because you are going to be driving right away because you have an appointment to tour the fabulous sewers of Barcelona! That's right. You're going to you will be participating in a guided activity called Entrails of the City, the sewers that is only legally available to book via La Fabrica del Sol, which is a program run by Barcelona's Municipal Department of, Ec of Ecology, Urban Planning and Mobility. Individual tours are hosted once quarterly on Saturdays for a maximum of 10 people, so you cannot miss your appointment for this. You'll learn all about the evolution of Barcelona sewers, their engineering, and even some local lore. If you speak Catalan, because the tours are not available in English. <laughs> <sighs> now, and I know... Active sewers or historical sewers? No, these sewers? are the real sewers of Barcelona. So yeah. like actual more poop. Yeah. Yeah. Are the fatbergs included? Well, I don't I don't know what the route is. You know, I spent I think four to five hours trying to figure out what this tour was, how to book it, who it went through, and how to get so if somebody wants to go tour the sewers of Barcelona, I literally have that information ready to go. It's amazing. <laughs> you translated it from Catalan. Oh yeah, there's a lot of time spent on Google Translate um, for uh, all of this, um, but because uh, a lot of those documents were only available as PDFs. So mm, great. <laughs> so anyhow, <laughs> after such a thrilling and damp trip down through the sewers of uh, through the sewers and centuries of Spanish waste management practices, you no doubt you're gonna want to lie down. Just like the occupants of the hearses on display at the Musée de Carros Funebres de Barcelona! <laughs> so the story here is, uh, here's, here's one of them. The, uh, this collection of 18th and 19th century Barcelonan funeral, funeral carriages is unsurprisingly the only one of its kind anywhere in Europe. Um, because funeral carriages became popular in Barcelona because in the late 18th century, they moved all the cemeteries out of the city because of health concerns. <laughs> um, and that quick, so that meant you need to have your, needed to have your body taken to a cemetery if yeah. you lived in Barcelona. And uh, this quickly meant that uh, carriages 
uh, became popular, and soon the opulence of your funeral carriage, as you can see here, they're incredibly fancy, uh, became the uh, ultimate, as in final, uh, display <laughs> of wealth for the city's elite. So they have this collection of 18th and 19th century funeral carriages on display. So decadent. Very nice. Uh, and of course, I suppose I, you probably need to get to Spain. So uh, I found, uh, so here's um, airfare from Vancouver to, to Barcelona, which return economy class, one layer over, one layover on the way there, two on the way back. Uh, so there you go. That is your first showcase. I have cropped out all the prices here. This oh. is just to give you an idea of how I picked the worst possible flights. I was like, can I cheat? At all here. No, no, no. Is that leaving at 10 p.m. from Vancouver? So you're red eyeing the whole way? Absolutely. It was the <laughs> cheapest flight. So, so Matt, are you interested in this showcase? Because all this can be yours if the price is right. Would you like to bid on this Spanish excursion or do you want to pass it on to Surge and see what else the mystery bag has in store? That trip is ironically kind of rad. Unironically, yeah. sorry. I didn't mean ironically, yeah. It, I, I can't. I can't take a gift and give it to someone else from you. I have to take this. Okay, part. okay, okay. Matt, so you tell me how much you think this showcase of uh, Spanish delights. You're traveling all over Spain in a 1995 Lancia Kappa. You are going to the Museum of the Orinal. You're going to go look at some Iberian pigs and then eat them. But not the pigs you're looking at. Different, very similar pigs. pigs. Uh, then you're going to go on a special two-part tour in industrial town O'Neill for uh, a doll factory and then a doll museum. And uh, you're gonna obviously stop at the most exciting thing here, the world's second largest chair. The chair, yeah. The chair. Yeah. Uh, and you're, then you're gonna go uh, muck around in some sewers and go look at uh, dead people, or well, what dead people were in. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the white carriages were for virgins and children. Interesting. I learned so much. About Spanish death. <laughs> um, well, you can't help but learn things while you're putting one of these together. Yeah. Okay. Um, a bunch of the museum walks are either for like 10 euro or free, I'm thinking. And there were like five of those, so I'll say 50 euro. The flights suck. <laughs> And you did say you're trying for the cheapest ones. Always the cheapest flight. And flights have gotten a lot of like specials going on. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna say the flights, 800 round trip. Oh. Because I've seen some specials for okay. flights. Um, the car could be a lot or not. I don't drive, I'm gonna say a thousand for the car. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to throw in 200 because that's how much I think the pigs are worth <laughs> emotionally. Mm. Okay. And then add on another 200 just for spice. Okay. So how much is that total then? That is, I think around 15. I thought you said 2250. 20? Yeah. You said 1000 for the car, 800 for the flight, 200 is 2000, the second 200 just because, and then 50, which was your... Museum stuff. I believe it added up to twenty-two fifty. Thank you for doing the math for me. I'm too gay to do it. Myself. Never trust me on math, though. Okay, so twenty-two fifty is your bid. Canadian. Um, yeah, there it's yes. all in Canadian. 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 <laughs> Let's say Canadian. All right, Serge. I just want to. I just. I talked over Matt's very good joke and being too gay for math. That was very good. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. Not an original joke. I learned something new every time. Yeah, I did fantastic. All right. <laughs> <sighs> So, sir, did you like that first showcase? I actually really did. Oh. I mean, it was strange, but it was so cool. Okay, well, hopefully it's you... all It's all up from here, right? <laughs> sure, I guess. Oh, good. I mean, I would describe our first showcase as was, it had some exotic delights. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, in a, in a beautiful, exotic place in the world. But maybe you want to stick a little bit closer to home. Okay. Maybe you're in the mood for maybe some down-home entertainment, entertainment. So in that case, why not travel very, 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 very far away from your home? Because you're going to beautiful Kentucky, Serge! Oh, I love their fried chicken. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> funny that you should mention that because what is more iconic to Kentucky than the Harlan Sanders Cafe and Museum? Uh, <coughs> this is 
the first, this is the first Kentucky Fried Chicken search. Are you serious? <laughs> the so, cold shot. So originally, really? yes, originally located beside U.S. Route 25, this historic restaurant operated from 1940 to 1956. It was where Colonel Sanders himself oh. came up with the famous 11 herbs and spices secret recipe. Mm. Now, of course, Sanders sold the cafe in 1956 after the state split the highway and relocated it a mile north, caused it to bypass the cafe and attached motel. <coughs> However, later on in the 80s, some unrelated people who owned a KFC franchise bought the site. And then in 1990, they converted it into a museum and it was added to the National Register of Historic Places as a combination KFC and KFC Museum. So as you can see, there's a bust of Colonel Sanders in there. There's all sorts of stuff. You can see his array. That's the actual kitchen or a replica thereof where he developed the recipe. That no was what he had. Way. Yeah, yeah. Here's all sorts of stuff. Uh, just interesting KFC papers. This man, you know, this is this, you know, in Japan, people would think this was a Santa museum. Did he run for senator? I see Sanders Senator on the wall there. Oh, I didn't read. Oh, God. I only read d deep into the history of this specific franchise restaurant. I didn't actually read that much about Colonel Sanders because I figured we could do that when we go to the museum. Yeah. Everyone's making the same joke in chat. I'm at the KFC. I'm, I'm at, at the, the accommodation museum. KFC. <laughs> I tried to work that joke into this. I, you're at the KFC. You're at the museum. You're at the combination KFC and historical museum. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> we'll workshop. Yeah. All right. So, Serge, would you say that, you know, visiting this, you've gotten a good taste for fried chicken? I see what you did there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, how better to celebrate that than by spending four amazing, fun-filled days at the World Chicken Festival! <laughs> That's right. Founded in 1990, the same year that... that uh, KFC was refurbished as a museum and added to the National Register of Historic Places. So there's some sort of chicken conspiracy going here. <laughs> the World Chicken Festival celebrates the rich culinary he uh, heritage of Laurel County, Kentucky, which is where the first KFC is located, because it was home to both Colonel Sanders and Lee Cummings, who is, of course, the founder of Lee's famous recipe chicken and Colonel Sanders' nephew. Chicken Dynasty in here. Fascinating. Okay. But of course, I would say there's music, there's a fair, there's activities, there's all sorts of things. There's, you know, local bands. Um, but the star of the World Chicken Festival isn't, I would say, the chicken. It's, in fact, the world's largest stainless steel skillet! As opposed to the world's largest cast iron skillet, which is a thing and is actually located in Tennessee. <laughs> They love their skillets, the Americans. So the world's largest stainless steel skillet is 10 and a half feet in diameter, is divided into those four sections that you see there. It's eight inches deep. It takes 300 gallons of oil, and they can cook 600 chicken quarters at a time in that thing. Huh. You like chicken that much, right? That's a lot of chicken. So, Serge, do you think that you might have need to have like a meat nap after all that? <laughs> oh, I'm going to have the meat sweats. Well, after you've really exhausted yourself taking in the sights, sounds, and smells of the World Chicken Festival, you're going to need some place to stay. So why don't you stay in Kentucky's lowest rated accommodation, the Economy Inn. <laughs> 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 so this... The uh, name. So this is wrote, this, this was uh, rated a robust 2.8 stars on Google Maps. Uh, the Economy Inn is a real no-frills kind of place. In fact, they have so few frills, they don't have a website. So I had to actually phone them today to check the rates. Why does the building look sad? Well, because the inside's sad, man. <laughs> <laughs> Amenities include, if you can't quite read that sign, uh, beds, cable t TV, refrigerators. Here's a bed. Uh, and if you believe the Google reviews, cockroaches. Uh, but there you go. That's that's the economy in. In. Did somebody rotate the TV to face the wall because it looks away in shame? I think that's just the very old television surge. They got a flat screen once in you know 2002, and it still works fine. They don't need to upgrade it. It's it's a sad state of affairs when a hotel has to list beds as an amenity. Yeah. You'll love it. 
Serge, I can tell you're a little bit speechless. <laughs> When I saw the bed, I thought to myself, I've stayed in worse, but then I saw this angle. And then I'm starting to question if I ever well, Showcase done. showdown trips are nothing if not attainable. Anyone could go out on a very modest budget and do the things that I have highlighted mm. here. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're speechless, that's good because you're going to be seeing a whole bunch of people. Well, people. Items. Just like that because after you get up bright and early because you're going to be visiting... The Vent Haven Museum of Ventriloquism! You get a different kind of doll. That's yeah. right. There's a lot of dolls this week or this for this showcase because Ben's not here. <laughs> All right. So this is the world's only museum dedicated to ventriloquism. And it became, uh, it, uh, it started out as the private collection of founder W.S. Berger. He was the, uh, the president of the American Association of Ventriloquists uh, for many years up until his death. Uh, he started collecting ventriloquism uh, dummies when he was not very old. And he originally just kept them in his garage. And then after that filled up a separate uh, outbuilding he built on his property. Uh, and after he passed away in 1973, a museum was open, uh, the museum was open to the public so people from all over the world could enjoy his collection uh, in its entirety because he was afraid it would get broke, broken up by other ventriloquism collectors. Those look bad to look at. Yeah, so there's over 1,100 ventrilo uh, ventriloquist dummies in this museum. I should have put more pictures of the dummies in here. I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> Let's just go back to the other one. There's so many of them. There really are. I. That's not even, that's like not even all of them. It's like a whole yeah. house filled with museum dummies. <laughs> Part of me is just like, some ventriculists are, are, are legitimately very talented. Yes. But God, this is so cursed. <laughs> It's deeply unsettling. One of the, one of the first autocorrects for Vent Haven, Vent Haven Museum is Vent Haven Museum Haunted. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, stop telling me ghost stuff. Just show me the dummies. <sighs> Anyhow, Serge, I know what you're thinking. Hey, I know all about Kentucky, just like Matt's an expert on Spanish geography. Yep. And I know that Kentucky has lots of incredible natural sites and wonders, like caves and stuff like that. So what, st what visit to the state wouldn't be complete if we didn't go to Kentucky Stonehenge! Pardon? <laughs> Located in, Mumford, in Munfordville, Kentucky, the Kentucky Stonehenge was built in the early 2000s by former Munfordville mayor, Chester Fryer. <sighs> According to an interview Fryer gave to the Louisville Courier Journal, his inspiration was simple. One day I was on the computer and saw Stonehenge and said, I can build that. I sat there and studied it. <laughs> I sat there and studied it and figured out how many feet across it is and where each rock sits. It's built just like the first one. I did it all myself. I never could work with nobody because they get to telling you how to do it and you mess up. So. Oh, God. Anyhow, uh, he didn't stop there, though. He spent about a thousand bucks getting all the biggest rocks he could from the local surrounding area and installing them uh, in uh, his own property, actually. So it's like his yard oh. you get to go look at. And uh, he had such good luck with Stonehenge that uh, that in the intervening years, uh, Kentucky Stonehenge has expanded and now includes several other displays, such as Earth Mysteries, the Garden of Jessamine, Rock Gardens, and Rock Park. So that's Kentucky Stonehenge. How good of a job did he do? I mean, he did it all himself. I did hear the word I heard, accurate. I heard that, but like... Yeah. I mean, it hasn't fallen down since he built it, and it's almost 20 years old at this well, What's this? Is a, is a scale replica? Yeah. <clears throat> well, like, no. Like one they, to one? Because that looks significantly smaller. They made no... They made no guarantees it was a scale replica, but it's certainly a replica. I'm just picturing Spinal Tap. And like, they couldn't afford the Stonehenge, so they just had like a little miniature thing. So you walk in they and... could have come to Kentucky Stonehenge if this was around when that yeah. movie was made. <sighs> <laughs> Anyhow. And Serge, since I know you're an expert in geography here... I really am, You yeah. know that Munfordville, Kentucky is just down the road from Louisville. And I'm sure that you know that no visit to Louisville would be complete without a visit to... The grave of Harry Collins, the official corporate magician of the Frito Lay Company. What? So Harry Collins was a guy from 
Louisville, Kentucky, and he was born in 1920, and he was an amateur mu uh, magician who was assigned to the special services during World War II after he was wounded in Saipan. And so he joined the USO tour, and then after he retired and went back to Kentucky, he performed as a magician in the evenings, and, uh, and his day job was he was a Frito-Lay salesperson. And apparently he loved both jobs so much that he made Frito-Lay, his magic catchphrase. When he would do a trick, he'd say, Frito-Lay! Maybe, I don't know if he rolled the R, but I feel like he should have. Um, and so anyhow, in 1970, the company realized that, you know, this was a different time when companies cared about their employees, and they thought this was so cool that they made Collins their official corporate magician, and he traveled across the country and the world performing magic tricks and paying homage to corn chips until he died in 1985. That's actually really charming. Yeah. Yeah. So, he lived the life he wanted to. So that is uh, that is the that is the grave of Mr. Harry Collins, Magic. of Mr. Magic, the official corporate magician of Frito Lay. And of course, I suppose you gotta get there too. So I found you oh. um, two uh, two tickets to Lexington, Kentucky, which was the closest airport I could find. Two stops each way, uh, oh, and wow. economy class, as is tradition. So I I am of, of, of course a geography expert, mm -hmm. uh, but for the people in chat who might not know the geography of America, where is Kentucky? Down in the south part of it, the sort of southeast. South, southeast? You know where Virginia is? I know where Florida is. Uh, yes, of course I know where Virginia is. That's, that's, because you're uh, a guess, I'm an expert, I'm an geography, expert, yeah. yeah. But for people who don't know where Virginia is, maybe you could tell them where Virginia is. You know where Florida is? Yes, of course, yes. Virginia is, I believe, above Florida. It's way above Florida. It's right beside Washington, D.C., which is further south than you think. It's like right in the middle. Yeah. There's Kentucky, some arc like yeah. animals got it. It's right oh. in the middle. Oh, it's higher up than I thought. That's probably the Midwest then, from what I know. No, the thing. Midwest is like. The Midwest is so central and. Uh, yeah, the Midwest. Yeah. In the center. So you, you know Ohio? Yeah. Oh, of course I know Ohio. It's below Ohio. <laughs> it's actually pretty close to Virginia now that you mention it, Matt. Yeah. Virginia is just on the right, I think. Hmm. South Neat. of Indiana. All right. All right. So flights. You go Victoria, Calgary, Calgary to uh, Atlanta. Uh, to Atlanta, yes. And then Atlanta to Lexington. Oh, four planes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Red eye again. North America's large. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Is that a 12-hour layover in Calgary overnight? Uh, no, it's an 11-hour and 25-minute layover in Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. You, you so like Calgary. I get to spend the middle of the night in Calgary yeah. just mm -hmm. alone in the airport. Yeah, okay. these are the cheapest flights. I You're see flying that. Delta and WestJet. No joy oh, yeah, we have both, from this. Both ways. You just overnight in Calgary both times. I guess I'll stay with my parents. <laughs> Neat. Okay, delightful. Okay. All right. So, Serge, how? What do you think the uh, the value of your uh, showcase is? All right. So the first stop oh, is. Oh, hold up. I'll, I'll oh, run through thank it again. You. Thank you. So thank we're gonna you. go to the Harlan Sanders Cafe and Museum. Yeah. We're gonna go to uh, to Chicken Fest for for all four days. The World Chicken Festival. Remember, they have the world's largest cast iron skillet. They there. sure do. Um, then you're gonna stay at the Economy Inn. The cheapest uh, hotel. Uh, in this... One night or the oh, no, four, all nights, four nights? All four nights. All four, four nights. nights at Chicken okay. Fest. Okay. okay. Four okay. nights at Chicken Fest. Then uh, you're going to get up bright and early and go to the Vent Haven Museum, the world's only museum all about ventriloquist dummies. Yep. Then you're going to go visit Kentucky Stonehenge yep. and uh, pay homage to the grave of Mr. Magic, the corporate Frito Lay magician. And we fly back and forth. All right. So. I'm going to say that the KFC Museum is actually probably really expensive. I'm going to bet you they charge you like 25 bucks a person to get into the KFC Museum. Okay. Counter to that, I'm going to say Chicken Fest is free or by donation. It seems like this sort of place is kind of cheap. Cheap. Or just kind of sweet, kind of well endearing. Mm. Maybe they'll have carnivals and stuff that you pay for, but I bet you the fare itself is free. They're accessible. How cheap is a cheap hotel in Kentucky? I'm going to guess... Forty dollars a night. Okay. And times four, that's going to be one hundred and sixty bucks. That brings my total to two ten so far. Okay. After the hotel, the next was the Ventriloquism Museum. Yep. By donation. Mm-hmm. After the Ventriloquism Museum, we had. You had uh, it's Kentucky Stonehenge. Kentucky Stonehenge. I bet you they also charge you money. Mm. I bet you that one. That one's going to be like thirty or forty bucks to get into as well. So for round numbers, I'm gonna bounce myself up to. I was one sixty. Plus twenty five. Let's just let's just say we're at we're at a, a an even 
two hundred bucks right now. Okay. The flight down, <laughs> the flight down to Kentucky, it's through Calgary. So I recently flew Victoria to Calgary, but it was over Christmas. Cost me like five hundred bucks. Mm. So expensive. But flying through Calgary, let's say twelve hundred round trip. Okay. Canadian. Wow, to all the way to Kentucky. All the way to Canada. Oh, I mean, it's probably cheaper, but I've got a bad taste in my mouth from Canada or from all right. my flight to Calgary. Said, it's all airport so, fees so these what days. Is, what is your total? So twelve hundred plus two hundred, you're fourteen hundred bucks. Fourteen hundred bucks. Fourteen hundred bucks Canadian. Fourteen hundred Canadian. All right, let's final go, answer. Perfect. Let's go through everybody's showcases and all see right. what we've got. So uh, I have a few more facts to dispense about these places because God, I love facts so much. Yes. Zipping back to Matt's showcase into Spain, we're going to see that the Museum of uh, the, uh, the, what is it called? Museo del Orenal is, uh, admission for that is two euro, Matt. Two. Two, two euro. That's it. That's all you got to pay to get in. All right. The Iberian Pig Tour at the uh, Feneas Camperas Ranch. That is really cheap. You can, they, you, I found a, like a website, you book that for only 18 euro. Mm. 18 euro. And that includes a little it bit of- includes a tasting at the end. That's he just walks cool. through some fields and look at pigs. It's like an hour long. Mm. It's, 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 there's only so much excitement you can get. Pigs are good. Now, now where'd we get, when we're going to this, uh, this, uh, this doll root of the doll. Yeah. Okay, so the doll museum itself is free to get into. Mm. However, I could not find a way to tour any of the doll factories in O'Neill without going through a tour operator group. Spain is very ah. organized when it comes to tourism. There's tourism operators for everything. Mm. Um, so it, it's the, the, the tour, to do this tour, which is like a graphic from this tour company's website, that is 60 euro for a group of four. So now I uh, I will say on the bright side it used according to the website it used to be eighty euro but they've marked it down twenty five percent I don't know why I don't know why people aren't paying full price for this incredible vacation thing that I would absolutely do if I was in Spain in in uh, in O'Neill um, all right so next up we of course had uh, the world's largest chair and uh, I'm gonna say it cost them a ton of money to build yeah. Uh, because they built, they could have built something like nine thousand regular chairs with the amount of oh wood God. that they used to build this chair. It's all uh, there's so much trivia about this chair, um, and uh, but it's 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 free to look at, yeah. and it's not really open to the public. The company itself uses it as a meeting room, but the okay. Chamber of Commerce does get to use it. So we probably can't get inside the chair. Although if we were going to Barcelona, I'd probably email them and ask if we could film a bit inside the chair. Honestly, yeah. Well, Best we're going to Spain. Thing. It's yeah. nowhere near Barcelona. Um, but the next thing is going to get you there. Your Lancia Kappa. I think I said about a thousand bucks. Uh, it's eight hundred euro. What? Eight hundred euro for that? Eight hundred euros. It was Euros? one of the cheapest car I could find on this website. Now, Serge, you're doing my math for me. How does that change to Canadian? Uh, you're actually under. Hmm? Oh. That's what I want to be. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, I think for somebody was saying, how, would this be a car beyond road quest? This car would not pass the road quest inspection. No. Like, there's no way. Too much human in that car. No, too used. Uh, all right, the sewers of Barcelona. Okay, so it's a government run tour and it only runs once a month. You can book group tours for like 10 people and that's like $2 a person or something mm. like that. Oh, it's wow. Not, like, the government's not soaking tourists for this. It's not a tourism activity, although it is mentioned on like a Spanish website, yeah. like a pr official Visit Spain website mentions the, t the sewers of Barcelona, but it is not easy to find this information on this tour. Let me tell you that. Um, however, because the tour is only in Catalan, and I figured you'd kind of, I want to know the sewer information, I did, uh, I did throw in 200 euro to hire you an interpreter for the day. Oh. <laughs> you didn't mention that. <laughs> All right, and of course, uh, the Musée, the, uh, the the Funeral Carriage Museum with all these incredible opulent uh, body movers. Uh, that is free, but you have to. You can only go on Saturdays between ten and two. <laughs> on someone's break. <laughs> yeah, what? essentially. Wow. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, and then I guess the real thing is your flights. Yeah. That's 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 the real difficult one. Would you believe I found a flight for one thousand three hundred and seventy-six dollars Canadian to get wow. there? And back, or just and like? back. So that means you guessed twenty two hundred. 
2250. 2250, yeah. So that's $1,556.72 for your activities and your car. Car is really worth it. Yeah. Um and $1,376 for your flights, which brings your total to $2,932.72. And that's so like 700 bucks. You only yeah, you're out by well, not even 700 bucks because it's like 680 or something like that. And I didn't go over. All right, so wow. 680, this is very strong. We typically have people go over because people do not realize the depths that I'm willing to go to to find free things to do on vacation. Um, Serge, so you wanted to, you're going to go to Kentucky. I'm going to eat so much chicken. You're going to eat so much chicken. That's like their whole thing there. You're going to go to the Harlan Sanders Museum and Cafe. Yep. Admission's actually free. No It's just way. connected to a KFC. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's just, that's the gift shop, isn't it? Yeah, I'll, well, have, I'll have a little extra gravy. Uh, they have <laughs> just like, it's like a display, essentially, that you can walk through. However, I thought that you can't go to the KFC and not eat the KFC. So a four-piece chicken box is $14 in Canada, and I think that'll be enough for, to cover, for you to cover a meal there. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about stuff like that. Like, how much carnival food am I eating? What's my, what's my expected spending when I go to the world's largest skillet? Well, uh... So these are the 2022 prices because the festival is happening in 2023, but they haven't updated their website, so I couldn't tell you which bands were playing there. But the admission is free. However, I figured you'd want to eat something that was deep fried in the world's largest skillet, and you can get a drumstick meal, which comes with a drumstick, potato salad, baked beans, and a roll for only five dollars. I gotta go to Kentucky. Yeah, if you want to eat chicken, what? it's a good place. Yeah, they they cook for scale, so it's cheap per unit. Oh my god. So anyhow, that's so five bucks. That's your budget for four days. <laughs> the Economy Inn. Okay, so I found the Economy Inn. Yes. I don't know if anybody heard me making that phone call earlier no. today. Thank goodness. That's why I was like locked in a room. So I, I couldn't find it. They don't have a website at all. I couldn't book online. I had literally had to phone them. So I phoned them. I was like, how much for a room? And the guy was like, $60 with a $25 deposit. You get the deposit back. And I was like, okay, but the rooms are $60. He's like, yeah, but you got to pay the deposit. He was insistent that we pay a deposit. But a deposit, I don't think, should count against your showcase total because you give them money, but you get it back. Yeah. So it's $60 a night, Serge. In my mind, I was saying 65 and I was like, that's too much. It's got to be cheaper than that. Yeah, what's cheaper than that? Because <laughs> 65 in my mind, is the cheapest I could poss possibly fathom a hotel room being. And I should have gone with my gut instinct. I said 40 Wow. Yeah, well, the economy hey, in is $60 you a night. Under. Well, that's four nights. That's only 240 bucks. Yeah, I said 160 so I'm 80 under there. Okay. All right, you want to, and then after after you. Oh, I'm sorry, sleep. Canadian or U.S. This is uh, six dollars USD, but I've converted all this. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I take, I add up all the USD, and then I convert it into Canadian, so you can, so you can give yep. me your total in Canadian. Yep. Your admission at the uh, the Vent Haven Museum. Actually, we'll put that picture back up to see all of the ventriloquist dummies, but also scripts, memorabilia, playbills, posters, recordings, which kind of seems weird in a ventriloquism museum. How could you know they're doing ventriloquisms if it's just like an audio recording? They could just be talking into the microphone. Okay. It was a different time. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, how much do you think it costs? You, how much did you budget to get in I here? believe this one is by donation. Absolutely not. This is a guided tour only experience and you got to pay 15 bucks US to get into that museum. That is an expensive museum by Showcase Showdown standards. All right, guided. All right. You also thought Kentucky Stonehenge would be quite expensive. I did. I figured, I figured a person who spent out of their own pocket to make their own museum was going to try and make some of that back. Uh, no, it's for you. Just drive up because it's literally in the guy's yard. Yeah. <laughs> Beep, beep. How's it going, Mr. Fryer? We're here to visit Kentucky Stonehenge. Isn't it funny that his name is Chester Fryer and he comes from Kentucky, which is a very chicken-centric state? Meant to be. Clearly. Uh, and finally, how I think you, what did you budget for visiting the grave of... Uh, Eric oh, Collins, the corporate I, magician. I'm going to be Friday. honest. I don't think I did. Okay, I don't think it's probably it's free. free. Yeah, it's, a, it's just yeah. A, it's just a cemetery. There's lots of other interesting graves that you can visit in Louisville because you know there's very there's famous cool people who've come there. But I feel this is a famous cool person who's a bit forgotten in today's day and age. We'd love that guy. Seems like a good guy. I haven't dug into his personal history, so I'm assuming he is. <laughs> uh, and finally, the worst possible flights to Kentucky. Which I said 1100 bucks or something like that, yeah. 1100 bucks. So, your total. $364.23 for activities and hotel. Okay. And how much was the flight? $1,306.32. Oh. Your total. 
$1,670.85. Serge, you're within like 250 bucks. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Oh, Serge. You win. Win. <laughs> a trip to Kentucky. I'm actually kind of tempted to go to K Kentucky now. I would eat the heck out of some fried chicken. I will say there's a lot of good things in Kentucky and, and, and Spain that I have not included in these tours because they're too mainstream. Anyone Wait, can tell you to go we do can do joy. better than this? <laughs> well, I think anyone can tell you to go do something like that lots of people know about. But why not do something that only some people know about? This is an artisanal trip. Yeah, this is, this is a very curated experience. Yeah. Yes. Ah, speaking of curated, curated experiences and having a good time, we had a curated experience earlier this week. I can't say that anyone had a good time but I think you'll have a good time watching it because it's time to watch a pre-recorded segment we're calling Hear and Seek. In my opinion, things have been a bit too smooth around here recently. And as you know, I'm a big fan of the japes, jokes, and jests and whatnot. Are you? The improv demands that you yes and me. Mm, mm, no. Now regardless, I have decided to, on purpose, accidentally move all of the moon bases walkie-talkies. Great. Well, I've got a camera and a new set of stilts, so I guess let's see if we can get the meat bags to find them. Mm -hmm, yes. Release the clowns! My fly done up. Excellent. Okay. 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 Equipment. This is never good. Bring all the walkie talkie here. Bring all the walkies talkie here. Bring all the walkie talkies here. Fastest wins. Time begins at the end of this sentence. Ow. Are they all on the same channel? Where am I bringing these walkie talkies to? Hello? Hello? Marco? Hello? Check, check. Aha! Check, check. Hello? 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 Oh, wait. Oh, God. Oh, no. Is it in the puzzle box? Gib? Yeah? How many walkie-talkies are there? Four. Okay. Oh, aha! Uh -huh. The pink means something. Yes! Oh god, is it in this? Aha! Uh -huh. Alright. Hello? Hi! Hi! Hello! Hello, 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 hello! Hello, hello, hello! No! 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 Okay, I got this one. Hello? Hello, hello? Wait. Is that it? Uh, no. No. No, I bet it wasn't. How many walkies talkie are there? Uh, four. Okay. Actually, wait a second. I'm gonna be smart about this. You go away now. That's not safe. Does it anyhow? Okay, you know what? If I do, if I keep doing that, I'm gonna screw myself. I swear I heard it! Where are you?
Is there a mute? This is gonna mess me up. Okay, interesting problem. Off? God, I'm so smart. Polo. Chicken? Whoa. Yeah, the freezer wouldn't be a great place to put them. Where where are these? La 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 la. Kaka! Hello. One more time. Oh, okay. Hello. Hello. Are you there? How many are you? Is it behind me? Where? Where? I'm allowed to mess up this room. Because I'm one of the people who cleaned this room. Where? <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is it you? It has to be in here. Doesn't it? Is it actually in the Christmas box? It must be in here. It must be. It can't be in here. It is somewhere up here. Okay, now I think I'm going insane. Hello? What am I hearing? I am baffled. There has to be a methodology that I'm missing, a theory of where these are stashed. If I can just see the bigger pattern. Hello? Is there like a different channel? This one says TM on it. This one says PG. It sounds so close. <laughs> you know the definition of insanity is? When you do the same thing and you expect a different result. Is it behind the bin of wigs? What if I looked into the bin of wigs? Oh. Aha! Hello. Ah, okay. That's one. PG. TM. TM. Does that mean anything? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, there's gotta be a better way to do this. Hold on. Test, test, test. Let me. It came from over there and now it's over here again. Hello? I can hear it, but I can't really hear it. Why does it sound like it's coming from over there? 
I have three dimensional hearing. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand how I haven't found you yet. Hey Siri, play O Canada. <laughs> I don't understand anymore. I don't understand anymore. All right. And clamps, 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 clamps. Why do we even have this? Why do we even have this? What even is this? It's always behind me! <laughs> it's impossible! So like half the time it sounds like it's above me and then half of the time it sounds like it's below me. It sounds like it's coming from my pants. That's very upsetting. Something nice and heavy. Great. I can't keep it on, so I can't just like play music through it or something in the other room. Ha! That's one down. There's a Oh. Aha. Okay. That's 3. Yes! I'm slowly going mad. Why does it feel like it's coming from over there now? Oh my god! This is like being in an auditory nightmare. Ooh, I sound like an ambient album. It's here. It's in here. Why can't I find it? Maybe it's in the creepy doll stash. For all I know. F, F, F. Uh. It's behind me again. What do you think? I think you're looking in the wrong place. Well, yeah. Take a break. Work on a different aspect of the problem. It will refresh you. That's good advice. You know what? I'll come back for you. So I can't go see Aphex Twin because he's playing in the UK this summer. But, you know, this is just as good. Hey, Gib, out of fairness, is there more than this one after this? Uh, yeah. Do I have a clue as to how many? Uh, yeah, there's four. Four? Hello? Is anyone here? Doesn't feel like it. Aha! All right. What a neat trick with an OU. A little walk is very refreshing.
It is in here. Three. I imagine Bartleby is just foaming at the mouth right now. Nothing here. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Bye. God damn it, I really thought you'd tape one to the other side of the table. Back of the wheel, Elder Dragon Social Club is what the tape on the floor says. All right, find the wheel. Let's assume that's a clue. Check, 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 check. Is there a better button for this? I'm just enjoying this, honestly. There's a mirror behind the wheel. This says no. This seems a little arbitrary, so I'm doing this first, just in case, just in case. Remarkably therapeutic, if nothing else. Okay, I'm willing to say nothing in here. I found this one. That was evil. I found the one in here. Oh my god, is the last one off? That would be so mean. That's it. I think that's it. I think that's it. Time? I can stop the clock if you'd like. Yes. You are off! Sneaky, sneaky! Well, this changes everything, Gib! How dare one of them be off! Gib? Yeah? Can I mute these? Is yeah. there a button to mute them? Yeah, you can just turn them off. Thank you. No problem. Did you click this for me again while I do a walk around? Would it help you to know that the fourth one's off? I will kill you. Is there any way to remotely turn them on? No, but you got everything you need to find it. The process of elimination? So the last one's not on though, right, Gib? Mm -hmm. If I'm supposed to use an alternate function of the walkie-talkies, where is it dark? Did I get all of them? Uh, no. Well, that's as good as you're gonna get. Wait. Wait a minute, there's writing on the back here. So if, if I have all of the tools to find it, 
and yet it's off. That doesn't spell anything. No, I got nothing. God damn it. C O P G. Where'd I leave the other one? T M P G. C O. All right, brain. We can do this. What does T M stand for? What does P G stand for? What does C O stand for? Turning you off. Pot gum. Top mug. Top mug. Top mug. Top mug. So there's a note on the back, which means that I bet that it's off. Top mug. Oh. I will not run. <sighs> That's time. Time. Time? I got four back in the same position. Am I done? You're done. Hey! I think I made that look easy. God, it's gonna take me so long to clean up the prop room. I'll stop the clock then. Thank you. was a lot more difficult for them than I expected. And yet none of them cried. This time. Well, chase your dreams, I guess. Yes, I too dream of being moister than I currently am. Shall we look at their final scores? Sure. This is very irritating. Just laying on the floor. Thinking about what I've done. I'm slowly going mad. This is like being in an auditory nightmare. How? Okay, now I think I'm going insane. Well, congratulations to all the participants. Uh, yeah, uh, e everybody won. Except the six of you. You're all terrible at finding walkie talkies. This thing get airstrikes? Knock, knock. Who's there? Spell. Spell who? W H O They have little bells on them so they make you happy. It's like the ones yeah. that that little girl is wearing in that video where she's crying and stomps her feet. <laughs> You're right, it did make us all very oh. happy. That's wild, yeah. I love it when a plan comes together. I'm gonna throw up. Hey, anybody, ever see a horse do this? Oh, that's, that looks not so good. Oh no. <laughs> that looks. <laughs> You could just add teeth and that would be complete.
Welcome to Sunday Chill Point. Yeah, have a happy Friday. So, yeah. Oh, unless you're watching this on YouTube, it might be Tuesday. It feels weird. Oh, that's true. Who knows what day it's a, it is? It could be any day. Welcome to church. Ew, no, I didn't sign up for that. I specifically went to work so I wouldn't have to go. <laughs> uh, three, two, one, okay. So card fight Vanguard, dear days, what we're doing is in uh, any percent run here glitchless. Um, and what I'm going to start off by doing is uh, uh, entering a Crunchyroll trial account and immediately canceling it. So this is a classic uh, sub cancel. What this does is it gives us access to watching the anime without actually getting our credit card dinged. Jesus Christ, Superstar is based on a book? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, all, all musicals have a book. Right. Yeah. yeah. And they're based off of Mario Puzo's The Godfather. Oh, right. Sorry. Well, because I don't watch a lot of anime, so I wanted to read the manga. Oh! oh nice one, Del Is it going to be Slenderman? Is it going to be Plowing the Librarians? <laughs> Yay! Yay! There you go. There's a, there's a musical about Slenderman. I have to leave the stream immediately. I have to go watch <laughs> Thanks for playing tonight, Jordan. Good night. There you go. You got your little, little late on. <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know what he, he just did the... <laughs> <laughs> We're over the ocean. Well, lake. So if, if if somebody falls, it's fine. And we can fly. And we can fly now, yeah. Well, <laughs> crap. I hope we're not being given a side quest to Union Bust the Moogles. Eating seeds is a pastime activity. The toxicity of our city, of our city. Go! <laughs> Play on the one! Play on the disorder! Disorder! Do you know what the worst thing about peeing at Margaret Thatcher's grave is? Mm. Eventually you run out of pee. Mm. <laughs> that, 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 and you are contributing to some trickle down economics. If oh. you don't have yes, chat is now remembering. We need to defeat Balzac's ringworm. Anybody remember Balzac? And we start with a level... We each have a... Jesus Christ anime. We each have a level zero unit in play from our ride deck. So we have... <laughs> I forgot the name on this guy. We, <laughs> we have a card called Diabolus Innocent Matt. Who's a level zero and has an opponent or sorry has an ability that says <laughs> when this unit is rode upon if you went second draw a card so here's what happened she accidentally stumbled into the factory one day while i was cleaning cooking mama <laughs> she told me how she was being neglected and ah! Ah! <laughs> Can we can we just take ourselves up for a second to imagine Cookie Mama as like just a game where you have pass mama and you can scrub the back. There were some different words there. This isn't the Crisis Core remake. Two soldiers come at you. You fucking murder them and then the game is like conflict resolved. <laughs> it's like, oh. Yeah, I guess I guess I did it, in a manner of speaking resolve that conflict. I killed two guys. I suppose that is resolution. You're right. Does that mean that this game has sharpening? Like you constantly have to resharpen your tools or there's weapon degradation? I don't, I don't know. know. Well, I haven't actually played the... Betrayal at Crondor has weapon degradation. I haven't played the uh, the, the, the Witcher games. Oh, I, I know that that's a thing and it's a meme to make fun of it. Uh, I mean, I as far as I was concerned, Witcher's like up there with Skyrim. Yeah, I mean, that's... Not, not in the sense that it's on everything so much as it, it's just, it seems to be one of those games almost everyone seems to have played. Mm. I'm, having, I'm having a great time. He's just doing some object work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. It's, it's true, he deploys his teeth. <laughs> are, they, are they like cat's claws? Yeah, it's like, like how they, they, like when he smiles, they aren't always there, but they come in. 
They need to, we need to slow it down and have them slide in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. real slow, like, <laughs> real sexy. <laughs> Next time, I promise, I'll earn a win through my own strength. Doshi. <laughs> Fuck, wait. I tried to do the dramatic gulp and I ended up choking on my own spit. <laughs> hey, don't get better! <laughs> Why? They're not even kids, they're just watermelons. I feel lied to. Yeah. Are they called Sour Patch? Why would you call them Sour Patch Kids if they're just watermelons? No. Watermelons literally grow in a patch. Yeah. Cancel culture is getting out of control. <laughs> Great, first I can't jack off to the M&M, and &M, and now this! <laughs> oh, nobody said you couldn't jack off to the M&M. <laughs> Meow. You're looking submissive and eatable. I... <laughs> hey, let's go on a commercial break. Okay, cool. Wait, what? Oh. Maybe I'm green-white. <laughs> <laughs> so, turn around, look at it from the outside. Oh, both of those need to be one layer higher. So both of our torch towers need one more concrete and one more torch there. Okay, I'm just gonna... Everybody close your eyes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> like, is that, what, is that when you squeeze the condom? No, or is stop that... it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Okay, so when a streamer and their ch uh, chat ah! fall very much in love... <laughs> Can, can, can the juice be concentrated? Like what you get, what you get with like, is there pulp? Quick break here, and then I'll be back for uh, some more magical cards. We're gonna get sixty nine, and then that's gonna be the new thing we do instead of high fives. You shall not pass. But I've had too much to drink. Drunk and Gandalf. Gandalf. It's the day after, and everything hurts. Gandalf. Gandalf. <laughs> Really sexy black man who should have been James Bond. Idris Elba. We're gonna go show in an improv group. I guess with so. With puppets. Again? It's a warm, watery thing that smells really good and I use it to clean myself and relax. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you want some help with that? Or? Oh no, I'm great. Okay. You just keep playing, I don't wanna cuss the scene. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Piss. <laughs> the bath? <laughs> Does an earth elemental have a butthole? I mean, it's got many cracks. I mean, I remember m marauding. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, it's... Do you think I could fit Yoshi's nose inside Birdo's mouth? That's probably what they do. Yeah, I, I feel I feel like that's that, that's an entire evening. Yeah. I mean, the eggs come out of the mouth, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh God, from the. Oh, it's um cloaca. Yeah, it's a cloaca on their faca. <laughs> a clofesa. A clofesa. Yeah, there we go. Do I need to explain docking to you off camera? Yes, you do. <laughs> okay. Off, off camera. camera. Do I not know what? I probably no, don't, don't know what it is. Nope. No, okay. No, you definitely okay. don't. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, I thought that was the thing I said with the, the Christians and the bed bouncing. No, no that's no. so no, 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 no. Oh, okay. Here, so okay. I'll demonstrate. All right, well, while they're talking. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Ah, Hi, Olmec. Man, <laughs> this shit's great. I love this game. Oh, man, there's lore happening. Oh! oh. Nice. Nice. Good job! <laughs> well jumped! <laughs> Everyone wins in their own way! <laughs> never, I never felt more blasted than <laughs> losing. <laughs> this kid is always going to pick rock, so we should paper, windmill paper, two in the pink, baby. Juliamon! Jesus, I didn't... <laughs> Do people want to use chicken hand? <laughs> Make it a four PC emote. That'll cost extra. 
You have 121 coins? Yes, again? yes I do. Maybe now I can buy a graphics card. I mean... <laughs> I shouldn't have spent all that money on beads that one time. <laughs> that actually kind of, that really fucked me. Like, I, I spent like 60 gold on a joke and now I'm just broke. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right for loading ready run. Mm -hmm. oh, oh my god! Oh, Smash! <laughs> wow! That was really close. That was awesome. <laughs> Good work, everyone. So what I'm hearing is, Graham ain't shit. <laughs> uh, well, well, Beach. You know, he was sick when he said that. <laughs> ineffable? Ineffable? I ineffable, I think is how I'd say, I would say it. Is it? Okay. Sort of serious. I feel like I know the answer to this, but is that just saying it's not fuckable? No, but I want to play with you in the space here. <laughs> uh, sure. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, is this one going to be a star? Yeah. Oh, look at that. We are getting steamrolled. Holy shit, the Kathleen sweep. Look at all those chickens. Ew, Clockatrice Reddy's mucus. Don't do that. <laughs> the bird going. <laughs> These fucking names. I ride Sterilize Angel. Uh, speaking of things that might be a scam or might have its use. E3. Oh, E3. <laughs> That's a really good segue, actually. Wow. That does make me think. Uh, and uh, how nobody is coming to E3. Now, I, I think I might have exaggerated slightly. <gasps> you think? Uh, hey, you guys. What do you do? These mines are the sovereign territory of the Arcadian Empire. If you have no business here, kindly take your leave. What if I rudely take my leave? Butthole! Folks, what you can't see is that Cory is still here, staring at the, uh, time ago. Egg. Are you happy with the egg, Cory? Egg. Egg will happen inside you later. Uh. 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 Arrow, that's gotta be good against... Something flying, right? Did that heal it? That just healed it. Okay, well, I was wrong. It wasn't even black bordered. <laughs> <laughs> Our Gussie. <laughs> yeah! Gussed up and ready to go. Oh, the golden Our Gussie. <laughs> hey, that word's in the dictionary now. Yeah. <laughs> What a world we live in! And then we do that, and we do this. Alright. Bye! I retire champion. Right. Yeah, there you go. And we'll put this back so on top. There, perfect. Yeah. Great. All right, make sure you hit me up on MySpace. Yeah. Can you feel the love tonight? Yeah, I forget <laughs> the lyrics. Yeah, I don't know the word. Welcome to the casino. Last week, I slept through a meeting and had no idea what was happening, and now I'm here, at the head of the table, at the Drank Roulette. I've prepared, for our friends, 16 brown liquids of varying flavors and effluvia. <laughs> Each one of them, food safe, a food product, one might even say. And, uh, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna spin the roulette wheel, and we're going to uh, take a drink. 
Once you've taken your drink, you get to decide whether or not that was a good drink or not. Ooh. And if it was a good drink, you get to do it again. You win. And if it's a bad drink, we'll bring someone new in. Now, who, who amongst you would like to go first? Test your fate. Just, just want to on three. Yes. Throw on three. Throw on three? Yeah. One, One two, two, three. three. Just quick, quick. Your choice. I love having food safe products. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> now, dropping character for a second, I've never felt the need to apologize for a bit before <laughs> in advance. Really? But this. You this, should have. This <laughs> may be a thing. All right. Anyway, here we go. That was terrible. Yeah. Five. Number five. Number five is your drink. Ooh, I'm not going to smell it. Um. No, number five. I think any of these probably best to be uh, taken just quick. Yeah, that's my game. I'm trying to identify which soda that is, but it's just a soda pop. Mmm, you were lucky that was cola coffee from cola? the Coca-Cola Corporation. Cola coffee? Good drink or bad drink? Uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. Ooh, okay. I'll, I'll stay. Right. That counts as a good. Beach, your fate remains at the wheel. Number 12 is your drink. Here? Please, enjoy. This one? That one, yes. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Good drink or bad drink? Bad drink! Oh. <laughs> you know, I had to take that one back to the store just for you because I accidentally bought pure vanilla extract. <laughs> And that was $17, and I thought you'd be upset about that. I am upset about that. So that's the artificial <laughs> vanilla extract. You got the tumbler drink? Fuck. <laughs> Next contestant. Ah. Uh, yeah. Vanilla ex that vanilla extract. I remember as a kid trying being like it smells so delicious. It really does. Doesn't it must it? taste delicious. It really doesn't. <laughs> Beach smells amazing. Mm. <laughs> I I never knew there were so many brown liquids until just now. Look, I I thought it would be a difficult thing. Turns out there are a lot of brown liquids out there. We're going to give this to uh Matt again here because that's when you win, you get to win to go first. Oh, seven. seven. Seven is a special one. That one? This one right here. Enjoy. I know that flavor. Good drink or bad drink? It's like another pop, isn't it? No. What do I know that flavor for? I'll give you three seconds. Please tell me what that was. The answer is coffee. Oh, duh. Just standard <laughs> coffee. I normally have milk in my coffee. Mm. I picked out a principle with this. Bad drinks? No. Good drink. Paul, prepare your face hole. Seventeen. Seventeen is. Higher numbers are better, right? Oh, generally, 17. Oh. Enjoy. All right. Ooh. I think that's tea. You are correct. That's chai tea. Yes. Good drink or bad drink? It's a good drink. I had some of that this morning. Well, <laughs> it appears. But it wasn't like a test. <laughs> it appears that both our contestants are in for another round. Mm. Let's spin the wheel. You, uh, as the new winner, get to go first. Seventeen. 
<laughs> Wait. Safe. <laughs> Does that mean I go or? Actually, no. Yes, we decided this. That means you get the number closest to 17. Okay. Uh, Wait, I'm going in. All right. I thought we were okay. 16 is it. Enjoy. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it didn't come out. You can, leave, you can leave that one upside down. Paul, before I reveal your drink, good drink or bad drink? Hey, it's not good, but maybe it's good for me. Mm -hmm. this is cough syrup. That is the Korean throat liquid, correct? The oh, Injom Pei Pai Ko. Mm. I. Don't you? I've had that before, but not usually straight. Mm. Usually a dilute. Oh, that's... oh, or it's a surprise. <sighs> yeah, I. To be honest, though, I, I don't know if I could necessarily call that like a bad drink, like in the sense that uh -huh. I have actually drunk that voluntarily on many occasions. Well, you're welcome to stay then. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, are you ready? Yes. Then you're going to get number three, number three. which is currently, ah, uh, yes, yeah. right here. Oh, oh, this is a special one. Oh. I mean, they're all special. <laughs> this one's thick. It's amazing. You both managed to get the thick wits at the same time. Thick wit, thick wit, thick wit. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. If it's a bad one, it takes so much longer. You can't just shoot it back. <laughs> Good drink or bad drink? Ooh, that's a spicy one. <laughs> um, not good to me emotionally. Mm. I can't tell you what specific thickwood it is. Oh, well, that's the tech. That is Yucca uh, Oh, special brand, the black habanero. <laughs> I'm leaving that. <now. laughs> I like there were so many words in that name before it got to the important bit. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it another contestant! Mm. Kathleen! Hello! Kathleen, I'm welcome. Here for some liquids. Welcome. Well, as is tradition, we're going to uh, let the, the winning person go first so that you can experience it up close. Paul, well, your next liquid is... 14. 14. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I... Whoa. I was like, that's not so bad. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. I think the cough syrup was, like, coating my mouth. And so it had like a delayed reaction to. I think this might be like a uh, 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 soy sauce or something. Not quite. Good drink or bad drink? That's the first one. It's not not a good drink. Okay. <laughs> or like hoisin sauce or oh, something. Oh, that would be nice. No, no. This is in fact what you use if you're too lazy to actually cook properly. That's what they call browning liquid. <laughs> <laughs> It's a brown liquid called browning liquid? Yes, to, used to make other liquids more brown and solids. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like brown food coloring? Basically. <laughs> with, with a lot of vegetable in it, too. It's, it's actually quite healthy and, and salty. Oh, I did not, I, I'm, I did not like that. Bring in another contestant! I'm gonna, gonna go brown some liquid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Corey, welcome to the casino. Are you prepared to see Kathleen's fate as it will soon become yours? Yes to part A, no to part B. <laughs> well, you're here now, too late. The reaping is so fun, the sowing is not so much. Kathleen, that's a 14. Okay. 14 appears to be already taken, so we're gonna give you 15. That sounds good. As is the rules. This is one that I thought would be more brown, but I'm concerned that a liquid surprised you with its color. <laughs> it's in an opaque bottle most of the time. <laughs> like hydrogen peroxide? <laughs> oh, for safety. Ah. Like hydrogen peroxide. Oh, dear. Our safety or your safety? <laughs> oh, is that chicken stock uh, or beef stock? That is correct. 
you've taken your shot of Bovril, just like James May. Oh, Bovril! Yeah. Oh, perfect. good drink or bad drink? Yeah, what good drink? You're correct on both accounts. <laughs> oh, it's quite tasty. Corey. Hi. Here we go. Okay. Thirteen, which is not on the table. Next closest number going up is 18. That one's the soy sauce. <laughs> yes! <laughs> 32? Hold on a second. Yes, that is the soy sauce. <laughs> is it good or bad? Good drink or bad drink? I mean, yeah, Tikam runs better than other alternatives. Well, let us go again then. Oh. <laughs> Wait, you know what brand of soy sauce it is? Yes. We're not a Yamasa house. Can't, can't you tell? <laughs> I'm whatever the biggest jug is at the Japanese grocery. <laughs> well, you're also 23, which now moves to 24. Don't look a day over 25. Mm -hmm. 24. What are we looking at here? We're it's about brown. To find out. It's certainly brown. Oh, is that um, stout? Like a coffee stout? Not a coffee. That is a uh, cookie stout. Oh, in fact. Good drink. Imperial. Delicious. Yes. Congratulations. I feel like I can't even like pretend this isn't a good drink. Mm -hmm. This is great. I love this game. <laughs> I'm glad I gave you some surreptitiously earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Without her knowledge, but she didn't know it was. Gonna, she didn't know it was going to be in the program. What you do get, though, is this number nine. One of the uh, few we have left with the number. Number nine. Hmm. Hmm. This is one of my favorites. That could mean anything. <laughs> Favorite to drink. Oddly enough, yes. Why? <laughs> no, that letter isn't in it. It's a GH in it? <laughs> Why? No. Why? Good drink or bad drink? Bad. Ah, so you're not a fan of Worcestershire sauce. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's some days I just like to go to the cabinet and just take a few dashes right to the mouth. New contestant! All right. Back on my bullshit. Well, Catherine's oh. lucky. Yeah, it seems that very way. Very lucky. Mm -hmm. Are you like? Would you like to see her get unlucky? For Absolutely. This? All right. It is a competition somehow. Twenty-three, oh. which appears to not be on the table. That's okay. Going up, though, the next number is twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Oh. This one's not as full. No, no. Um, some of them I figured it might, j just based on the, the salt content, might be good to <laughs> This is like, like, we said it was food safe, but you know, there's certain portions that it needs to be to count as food exactly. safe. Exactly. I wouldn't necessarily say a shot full of Worcestershire sire sauce is normal. What's Kathleen? the LD 50 on Worcestershire? <laughs> 10. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Oh! Is that liquid smoke? Can you tell which type? Oh, oh no. Mesquite. Yes! Yay! <laughs> that was an awful drink. Okay, bad but I'm drink. Still a winner. But you got yeah, the moral victory is yours. New <laughs> contestant! You know your smoke. Matt, you're back. Oh my god. I know this man. Hey, we did this once already. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Let's uh well. Let's roll it up for me or him. For Beach. Yeah. <laughs> an opportunity the winner the gets the uh, seven. Seven is not on the list, so let's go up to the next uh, closest number, which would be ten. Trying to find out where that is in my list here. What are the other numbers on there? Regret every single part of this thing that isn't moving very easily. Mm. <laughs> 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 Soul's a good one, eh? Wait. Oh. <laughs> That's turnaround. Yeah. 
All right. It was 2, 10, 13. I'm trying to yeah. find that on my list That's here. That's doable. I don't think I have that. Can I? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You just gave me some random stuff. <laughs> can you guess? Together. Can you guess what it is, though? It was way too much in a single shot. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. But you, that's syrup. That is, in fact, maple syrup. Yep. Mm, good yeah. drink or bad drink? It's a good drink. Yeah. You can't do a shot of maple syrup. <laughs> but when, it, when it's done, it's divine. Mm. Like, I could not handle that right off the top, but now I'm good. But that, we'll let you process that. Yeah. We've only got a few left here. Two. two. Which means four and 22. <laughs> you know, math. Look, this is how this is how we're at, Will. I just say a bunch of words and, uh, and the numbers wins. come out. Four and 22. Ah, yes. Oh, good. This is this is the one you were questioning earlier, oh, Beach. Well, I'm glad I didn't get it then. Oh, what did he say? <laughs> Let me experience it now. Mm. I was surprised at how many crystals had formed at the bottom of the bottle. This <laughs> Very salty. Good drink or bad drink? The bad drink. Mm. Think of all the crystals. <laughs> yeah. The surprising crystals. People are not generally big fans of straight fish sauce. But oh, no. <laughs> That is a hell of an effort. I'm leaving now. Get this gentleman some water. Next contestant! Uh oh. This is the worst kind of roulette. Yeah, I was gonna say two shots is, left. This is like Russian roulette, but the gun has all <laughs> six. It's like, wait yeah. a minute, this isn't actual. No. <laughs> I mean, Ian knows whether there's any good ones even left at this point. And even he has a weird palate. That's true. That's true. Oh my, Beej, you are getting 22. The next highest number is 31. I think you actually lucked out. I guess I'll be the judge of that, won't I? No. Sucks to be you, Paul. We all lucked out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. I'm trying not to smell it. I can smell apple cider vinegar. That's mm. really, really screwing with me. Yeah, there's no apple cider vinegar there. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, 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 it's sharp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good drink. I don't, okay, I don't mind the taste of rice vinegar, but I couldn't <laughs> drink it every day. Oh, wow. Yeah. You've named two different vinegars yeah. that weren't in this position. <laughs> well, <laughs> fuck me, I guess. <laughs> Balsamic vinegar. Ah! Oh! It's very ricey. Well done. Uh, I could not drink that every day. Technically mm. a bad drink. I'm not going to move because there's one thing. I left. mean, we're going to we're, we're going to ro <laughs> roll it anyway. <laughs> Let's go through this charade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what a surprise! Well, mm, the next highest number is I, I get. Well, I guess it's six twenty. Paul, view, view, view. Oh. enjoy. I mean, consume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I do not promise to enjoy. That was never part of the bargain. There is no ethical consumption in Loading Ready Rock. No. <laughs> oh, what? Ugh. It's coating the inside of. What? Ugh. You just. You and coatings. That has almost no taste. But somehow that lack of taste is coating the inside of my mouth. Ooh. Ugh. Palate cleanser. Lidocaine. <laughs> Mineral oil. Is that just, yeah, is that just <laughs> like, is that like cooking oil or something? Not, not really cooking oil. It is a delicate, it's more of an aroma <laughs> oil. Uh, good drink or bad drink? It's bad. Okay. That's, I mean, it has hardly any taste, but it's got like a horrible texture. Well, I know it. what that is. Okay. I think they usually, yeah, you usually, and they've got it in the chat. That is sesame oil. Oh. <laughs> I yeah I can taste I can I can actually taste a little bit of sesame now that yeah oh that uh it's weird that people don't just normally drink oil out of <laughs> out of shot glasses mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no it's it's the research that I've done into brown liquids that you can <laughs> eat has been very interesting but what I'm learning today My is that you absolutely should not drink some of these brown liquids directly Mm. And and, and, and I, I fear for the next mm. bit mm. that I am a part of that I'm not hosting. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone, for watching Loading Ready at Run. Yeah.
tonight. Uh, check us out over at LoadingReadyRun.com. Thanks to those of you who are helping us out over at Patreon.com slash LoadingReadyRun. And we will see you next time. But before that, enjoy this. How many apples grow on trees? I don't know how many apples grow on trees. All of them. <laughs>